So with the six hyperbolic functions now at hand, we can talk about their derivatives. How would we compute the derivatives of these hyperbolic functions? Well, it turns out the derivatives we're going to see are very similar to their trigonometric counterparts. For example, consider the derivative of cinch. We're going to see in just a second the derivative of cinch is equal to cosh. This is actually a fairly simple argument here. If you want to take the derivative of cinch, well, then basically we just have to take the derivative of, you know, to apply its definition, we get e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 prime. Uh, we can factor out the 1 half, so we get e to the x minus e to the negative x prime. Taking the derivatives of these things separately, the derivative of e to the x is itself, and the derivative of e to the negative x, well, by the chain rule, that's just going to equal negative e to the negative x. So we get 1 half e to the x minus a negative e to the x, negative x, excuse me. But that double negative becomes a positive, so we end up with e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. That's just the same thing as cosh. So we see that the derivative of cinch is equal to cosh. The sim a similar statements can also be true for cosh, right? We're gonna well, we could prove by the same argument that the derivative of cosh is equal to cinch. Now you'll notice that the negative sign is missing. This is something we saw earlier when we talked about hyperbolic functions. It's basically the same stuff as trigonometric functions, but sometimes the negatives become positive and positive become negatives. So the derivative of cinch is positive cosh, and the derivative of cosh is positive cinch. You could prove it by a similar argument as we just did with cinch. How about the derivative of, of hyperbolic tangent? The derivative of hyperbolic tangent is going to be hyper, or hyperbolic secant squared. Uh, it's basically the same argument. If you want to take the derivative of hyperbolic tangent, well, you treat it like it's a quotient. You're going to take cinch over cosh, and you take the derivative via the quotient rule. So you're going to get low d high. The derivative of cinch is cosh minus high d low. The derivative of cosh is a cinch. Square the bottom, here we go. So we get this cosh squared on the bottom. You'll notice, of course, in the numerator that we have a double cosh, that's a cosh squared. We get a double cinch, that's a cinch squared. So we get cosh squared minus cinch squared. Now by the Pythagorean identity on hyperbolic functions, cosh squared minus cinch squared is equal to one. So this thing will just become a one over cosh squared, which is the same thing as hyperbolic secant squared. And so the derivative of hyperbolic tangents, this is basically the exact same thing. It's just we have to add in these h's into consideration. When you take the derivative of hyperbolic cotangent, it's basically the same thing. You're going to get a negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. When you take the derivative of hyperbolic secant, you're going to get a negative hyperbolic secant times tangent there. So there's this extra negative sign. So you have to watch out for that. Uh, when you take the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant, you're going to get negative hyperbolic cosecant, hyperbolic, co, uh, hyperbolic cotangent. So basically, we just add a bunch of H's everywhere. The only difference is going to be here and here, uh, where this here is a consequence of this one right here. So if you can remember that the derivative of cosh is cinch, you're basically going to be just fine when you calculate the derivatives of these things. The calculating derivatives of hyperbolic functions is very similar to trigonometric functions. Just be cautious of that negative sign. So basically, we have a brand new uh, evolution, a brand new generation of Pokemon that can be entered into our decks, into our team now. So welcome, Pokemon Cinch and Kosh edition. Because we can take all of the functions we already know, trig functions, logarithms, exponentials, power functions, with all the rules we know, uh, power rule, quotient rule, product rule, chain rule, we can combine those all together with the hyperbolic functions and calculate their derivatives. So could we calculate the derivative of Kosh of the square root of x? Absolutely. We should recognize that there's two functions in play. There's the square root of x sitting inside of cosh. And so we take the derivative by the chain rule, the derivative of cosh of the square root of x. Take the outer derivative. You're going to get the derivative of cosh, which we saw earlier was cinch, cinch of the square root of x. Then you're going to multiply that by the inner derivative, which is the derivative of the square root of x, which is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And so that's basically it. Not much more you can do with it, really. Uh, you can write this as cinch square root of x over 2 times the square root of x. Again, no simplifications going on here. The derivative calculation is really no more different than calculating derivatives of the trigonometric functions. Again, just remember derivative of cinch is cost, derivative of cost is cinch, and you're going to be just fine.